welcome back to my channel. So up until this point, I've showed you guys how to budget on paper and I also showed you how I track my um, expenses or my transactions on my planner and here I can probably show you. So this is how I started tracking it for the month of March in my happy planner. I just go to each day and I write down everything that I've spent. But honestly, doing this every single day um, gets kind of hard for me to do. So what I like to use is Dave Ramsey's Every Dollar Budget app. I absolutely love this app. I think I've been using it for about two years now. And what I like about the app is that as soon as I make a purchase, I can go ahead and put it in my phone, in my app, right then and there, instead of having to keep my receipts, come home and transfer it onto my planner. So what I do is, let's say for gas, for example, when I buy gas, as it's starting to fill up, I kind of like type in there like what gas station I'm at, and you know, I open up the line item for gas, type in what gas station I'm at, and so like as soon as it's done pumping the gas, I'll type in real quick, okay, I spent $20 today on gas, and then it's just like that quick, or if I go to the grocery store, I'll hold on to my receipt, and once before I drive off, I go and I in my app and I put in how much I just spent at the grocery store and what grocery store I spent that money at and then I mean it's so quick so easy cook so convenient now every dollar does have a paid for version it's about ten dollars a month and when you're trying to get your finances together and you're trying to get out of debt no one wants to pay ten dollars a month for an app so with the ten dollar version of it it does um keep track of your money once you swipe your debit or credit card but i just didn't want to do that because one it doesn't put it in the correct category every single time so you still have to kind of go in there and figure out which category you need to put things into and then two for me i love looking at my budget every single day on my app so you know I kind of keep track of like what I'm spending if I'm using the app every single day so I use their free version and it works great and like I said it just kind of helps me keep a mental note of how much money I am spending and every couple of days or so I'll pull out my happy planner and I will jot down my transactions in there because I do like looking at it in my every dollar I'm sorry, in my happy planner as well because it's kind of like a bigger picture for me and I can see like what days I spent money on and what days I didn't spend money on. So I kind of like both. But today I wanted to show you guys how to use the Every Dollar app. So I'm gonna kind of like take you through it on my phone. Okay, so this is for the month of March. I had it filled in before, but I went ahead and deleted everything so that I can kind of walk through everything with you guys. So I want to just point out a couple things here. So at the very top it says March 2020 and that is the month that we are budgeting for. So that's the month that we're in. You can actually use the drop down and it'll go to other months but we're just worried about March for right now. So I'm going to click on that again. And then the next thing that you see is planned spent and remaining. So everything that we think we're going to be spending money on, that's what's going to be on this very first page. And then as you start spending money, you'll kind of see it go on the second page and then on the third page, how much money you have left over in each line item. So for example, if we plan like $100 for grocery in this um in this particular category, then We'll have $100 there, that's what's planned. If we spent $50, it'll show us that we spent $50 here and that we have $50 remaining. So that's where those three little tabs are for the top. Then if you move down some more, it'll say monthly income. And ha I haven't put anything in for the monthly income yet. So right now it's at zero. Um, and they started this new thing which I really like and it's called the sign in shriek so every time you sign in you get like a blue dot there and honestly I sign in a couple times a day every day even before they started doing this like they recently started doing this and I just thought it was such a um a great thing because it kind of encourages you like oh I want to make all my shrieks this week so I'm gonna sign in like you know it's it's really good to sign into this app every single day or just to look at your finances on a daily basis at least once a day for me i know some people think that's kind of excessive but i feel like that's what's helping me stay in line 
So anyways, <laughs> we're gonna start by inputting our income. So I'm just gonna be using the same numbers that I give you guys for my March budget. If you guys do wanna look at that, the one that I did in my Happy Planner, I'm gonna link that down below. But I'm gonna start with adding an income. And the first thing I'm gonna put, and I like to write this first part in all capital letters, is paycheck one. And I budgeted $1,700 for that. And then as you can see at the very top, it starts to add like, okay, I have $1,700 to plan for this month. But I get two paychecks um, this month. So then in the second one, I'm gonna add, oh, we want that all caps. I don't know, I feel weird about not having it all caps. <laughs> Paycheck two, and I budgeted $1,500 for that. So, our planned income is based on $3,200 for the month of March. So we've already gotten our income in there. So now we just have to make sure we give every dollar a place. So now that we have already inputted our monthly budget, which is $3,200 for this month, now we're going to move down to our categories. So for me, I have use this app like i said for two years and i've changed up how i did things a lot you know those two years because you really have to try to find what works for you and for me having two get categories my variable expenses and my fixed expenses is what works best for me like i like having two categories some people could have more you can have a category just for transportation and you can put your gas your insurance your maintenance and all that under that category like how i have variable expenses then you can have another for groceries and all that but for me i find that having two main categories works fine and like i said our bed just it doesn't have to look the same it just has to make sense for you and your family so in my first category, um, that's my variable expenses. So some of the things that you guys know that I have in my variable expenses is my auto gas. And so you just add it and put done. And in the plan, I usually plan $120 for my auto gas. So as you start putting money like you start planning your money, it starts deducting how much money you have left to budget. So we started with $3,200, we put $120 in for auto gas, and at the top you can see that now $3,080 is what I have left to budget. So the next line item that I'm gonna be budgeting for is going to be groceries, slash, and I, I use this line item for both my groceries and my toiletries. Oh, oh I can't spell. And in this line item, this month I had budgeted $350 and I kind of explained to you guys why it's so high this month. The next one is entertainment slash personal. Now this is one of those categories or line items that I'm going to leave blank right now. This is usually based on how much money I have left over after I've budgeted for everything else. The reason for that is this category, while it is important, it is the least important uh, line item that I have. So because of that, I don't actually give it a fixed number. I just kind of wait to see how the rest of my budget goes and then I'll come back in the end and give it an actual number. So we're gonna just kind of leave that at zero for right now. So the next thing that I had um, planned this month was my doctor's appointments and I budgeted $300 for that good and then the next thing was I was going to be booking a flight to Clearwater Florida honestly guys I'm not sure if I want to go with all the craziness that's going on but I budgeted $160 for that and then the last thing in this category but a very important thing is my miscellaneous uh, category and for that I budget usually about a hundred dollars so as of right now I have two thousand one hundred and seventy dollars left to budget so we're gonna move on to our fixed expenses first thing that I budget for in my fixed expenses is my mortgage 
And for that, I usually budget $950. This is actually a big chunk of my income. And it automatically puts the due date in there for me. So if you click on that line item, you can actually click on where it says due date and choose when it's due. Um, and you can repeat it monthly like I did here. So that's why it's automatically coming up is because I have it um, do that for me every month. And you'll probably see that for the rest of my bills. But I thought that was pretty cool that it does that. That's actually something new this year that they've added to. Um, so the next line item for me is my HOA. I want that in capital letter. Oh my gosh. And I budget $85 for that. Then the next one I have is water. And like I said, you guys can have um, different categories. This is just what I have. And for water, I do $35 a month because it's due every other month. So for me, $35 a month um, is pretty good. The next thing that I'm gonna have for a line item is my Georgia Power, my electricity. And I usually budget $100 for that. And then I have my Xfinity bill because I just have internet and for that I budget $80 and as you see it's like now I only have like $920 left to budget and it also has a due date now my Georgia power doesn't have a due date because well I I never really know the exact date of when that's gonna be due and actually my HOA I could show you guys here it doesn't have a due date but that is usually due on the third. And we're gonna repeat that monthly. There we go. All right. So the next item we're gonna be budgeting for is my alarm system. And I budget $40. And then I have my Netflix, a little splurge. And that's $15. Next one is car insurance, and this is part of my sinking funds, but it does go into this account, $200. My taxes, I'm saving for my taxes for 2000, for when I do my 2020 taxes. And for that, I put $200, okay. The next one is given, and for that, $50 and that's just to a charity that I like to give to and then I have my mom's gas and that's $89 oh I'm telling you why do I keep messing up and then mom's Comcast and that's $50 okay so the last um, category that's on here is debt and I don't have any debt except my mortgage and I don't put that on here because I don't pay my mortgage um, down because you guys know that I'm trying to pay my mortgage down as fast as I can but I use my second income to do that and I don't budget my second income with um, this you know my household budget I do keep that separate so when I was paying off my credit cards and things like that I did list my debts here because I had to pay all my credit cards every single month but because I don't have any debts I don't have anything in this category as of right now so after we've like basically put everything in um, yeah it's pretty much everything um, I'm gonna go back to the top and let you guys see so we started off with $3,200. I now have $276 uh, to play around with because I pretty much used every other dollar and gave it a home. So I'm gonna go back to where it says entertainment and personal, and that's how much I'm gonna give myself in this category. Now, if you guys can put money towards your savings, I already have an emergency fund saved up for, and any extra money that I make outside of my Monday through Friday job, I throw towards my mortgage. So that's why you don't see me taking out anything for savings here or anything for my mortgage payoff here, because this is strictly just my household income. Everything else is um, 
come down my side income i want to show you guys how i actually track my transactions on this app so let's just go to auto gas so i'm going to touch the line item that says auto gas and then at the bottom right there's like an orange circle with a plus sign in the center of it you're going to click on that and where it says amount you're going to put how much you spent um so let's say i'm at the gas pump right now i'm spending $25 I'm gonna put that in the amount and then it has the date at the top now if you're doing it the day of then the date will be correct but if you're doing it like a day later you're inputting this a day later you can just touch that and it'll you know give you an option to change the date but we're gonna keep it as is and then so once you put in the amount you're gonna put where you bought the gas from and I like to put like shell that's where I get my gas from sometimes. Also, um, I put little notes right here. Like if you spent $25 at the gas station, but some of it was on food and then some of it, oh no. If some of it was on food and then some of it was on gas, just to kind of give yourself a reminder why you spent so much, you can kind of save that right there, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And then you're going to save, all right? And then if you go another time, again, you just put the plus sign. Let's say the next time you go, you spent $15. You went to Shell again. Um, and then you can save it. As you can see, it lets us know that we have spent $40 of the $120 that we had budgeted for this line item. And at the very top, it'll also tell us that we have $80 left for the month to use for auto gas. The same goes for grocery, entertainment, and everything else that you have as a line item. Then down here, when I'm putting in my uh, mortgage, I'll just put, it's usually like $944 and some change. And I'll just kind of keep that as mortgage. And I'll save it. And so that lets me know that I budgeted $950 for my mortgage, but I have $6 left. And so you can kind of play around with the app that way, but that's how I track my transactions. Now, as far as my paychecks go, so yeah, I budgeted $1,700, but if you click on that paycheck one, you can actually put in how much you got paid. Let's say we got $1,716.32. Well, $1, then you can put that in there and save and then now it'll let you know what you planned and what you actually received so i kind of like that and yeah so that's pretty much everything i absolutely love this app i love tracking my expenses on here it really does help me stay um, on track for my budget so that's all that i have for you guys today i really do hope that you've enjoyed this video because i enjoyed filming it for you guys if you did like it please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys all in the next video take care bye guys